Greetings. This is Artie from Artifact Electronics. So I, I wasn't really planning on making, on doing a part three on the Osborne because we got it working, but uh, one of the drives couldn't write, and the case looks really bad. So it was really a matter of me looking for parts and maybe doing a third episode sometime in the future. But uh, what happened was, uh, when it rains it pours, I guess. And uh, a day later, I got contacted by a guy who said that he had an Osborne in parts, in a box, disassembled, and uh, he didn't want a whole lot of money for it. So this is what I ended up with. If we look at the stuff, so there is a case, especially that part, the top part, it's kind of yellowed. That one looks nice. It's still dirty, needs to be cleaned up, but it sure looks nicer than that one. It has the uh, front face, bits and pieces of the cabinet, bag of screws, the uh, main frame that holds all the components uh, with a monitor, two logic boards, one uh, with the double density modification on it, the other one not. And then the interesting part, why I really went for it, two disk drives. One of them is complete, the other one has a broken faceplate and is missing the PCB. But I figured, hey, if I get these, at least I can uh, put a more consistent looking case on the uh, Osborne and probably get the head out of one of these or put a working PCB into one of the two disk drives and then I'd really be done with this guy. So first things first, let's go through and have a look. Uh, let's test some of these new components and see what shape any of this stuff is in, if the drives are even working. So along with the missing and broken pieces on the disk drive, the only other thing that, it, that we're missing here is the uh, power supply board that probably somebody cannibalized from this and then uh, got rid of this stuff. I don't really need the power supply because I wasn't planning on building a second one, but rather making a single one that's kind of nice. Now for those of you who jumped in to this episode without having seen parts 1 and 2, I'll link to them in the comment section below. And I highly recommend you watch those before watching this because it uh, probably won't make a whole lot of sense to you if you don't know the backstory. But what we're going to do now is, uh, before ripping apart the old one and doing anything else, let's go and see if we can test some of these parts using, of course, the original Osborne as our test bed and uh, see what parts... Well, we only need the disk drive, really. But I'm also curious to see if the PCBs are working and also if the monitor is in good shape. So let's start off with the monitor. Give it some time to warm up. I don't hear any noises. Let's see. Oh. We have a good-looking monitor here. Uh, as compared to the original, this one is white on black. The other one was green on black. And this one came with the little diffusion shield. Which is kind of scratched up, but uh, gives it a much nicer look. So, uh, we have a working spare monitor. If I ever get tired of a green monitor, I got another one. So now let's try uh, <clears throat> the first PCB. This is the one without the dual density mod on it. <clears throat> and one thing I noticed was they all have, all of the Osborne boards have this plug on it. 
that I guess routes the video either to the internal monitor or you can get others that have a composite output on them and that was missing so I stole that one off the working board because otherwise you will not see any video so let's see it beeps and we get a really bright screen let's see we get a good screen so it did come up now since this doesn't have the double density kit in it I am I put a single density disk in there it's the one with the uh, diagnostics well it retracted the head but looks like it's having a hard time reading give it a little more time and we get a boot error so I know that that's a good disc but it's having a hard time with it so uh, the disc I.O. on this isn't working but I'm sure there are lots of usable parts on it otherwise here's a second motherboard it was also missing the uh, video plug and it also was missing a small ribbon cable running from the dual density adapter to the main board so yeah I stole both of those off my working board and we're all hooked up let's see what happens got a beep that usually means that the system did boot up so we got a screen I still have the single density drive, uh, single density disc, the tester disc in here. And this one doesn't want to read at all. So on this one, one other thing to try is, uh, let's pull the double density board off it and see if that makes any difference. Alright, I pulled off the uh, double density board and uh, let's give it another try still comes up and it still can't read at least the other one said boot error now it doesn't say anything at all oh there's a boot error Alright, so I guess both of these, both of the boards have problems. I'll probably go in and swap around disk controllers and see if that makes any difference. But uh, the boards are live, but no disk drive calm. Well, things kind of went downhill after I tested the uh, motherboards. That screen doesn't show up too well, does it? Okay. Let me turn off this light. Doesn't make much of a difference, but I put the temporarily mount this diffusion shield. Does that make things any better? On video it does. Oh well. But as I was saying, things just went downhill. I did try the uh, motherboards a little bit more. They wouldn't boot, and what I found out later on was every time I tried to boot with one of the uh, two parts motherboards, they would uh, render the disks useless. They, uh, which of course caused me a lot of problems because when I tried the disks in the normal drives again, things wouldn't boot and I thought I had broken everything, but no, the uh, motherboards were not too helpful here. Then we got to the uh, drives, and you saw the faceplate on one of them was broken, and uh, there was only one controller board, and uh, I didn't film it because it took me quite a while, but the end result is that this drive, I built a Franken drive. This is basically the body, the mechanics of the original drive 2, no, I'm sorry. 
This is the body of the, one of the parts drives with the front faceplate not broken. I then took the controller board from the uh, original drive 2 and put it into this drive and things still wouldn't work. And then I found out that uh, the body of, drive, of parts drive number 2 had a seized <clears throat> Sorry, I had a brain fart. It, it had a uh, seized bearing, so uh, the spindle was, it was having a real hard time moving the spindle. So I uh, opened it up, saw that one of the bearings just, no matter how much I oiled it, it wouldn't change. So I took the bearing out of the drive that had the broken faceplate. That one seemed to have a good bearing. I still oiled it a little bit, put everything back together again and things seem to be working now and as a final test now we're back to original basically this drive is the original drive one that worked and of course drive two is the Franken drive so what I want to try to do here is of course boot off Boot off drive A, go into CPM, and quickly try to format a drive in the Franken drive. So we select F for format, uh, select this get to format, and B, and go. Single density or double density? Let's do double. And as we can see, Franken Drive is now formatting. I know that's not very clear. But it's basically putting an asterisk for every track that formats correctly. And the format completed successfully. Return for main menu, return to exit. Now we should be able to run a directory on B. And there's nothing on B. So we're done. The machine now seems to be, we have two working disk drives. Everything else seems to work. We haven't really talked about the I.O. ports, but uh, we'll leave that for another time. The machine itself is now working and is ready to be put into eternal storage. Uh, even, my, even my patience was tested with this machine, but at least it works. So at least I got a case, a better looking case out of that last parts haul. Even though this case is yellowed, at least it is consistently yellowed. And. Uh, looks a lot better than the old one and if I ever get around to experimenting some more with retro brighting I will share it with you guys so thanks for watching thumbs up would be appreciated make sure to leave me a comment about uh, what you think of is it worth restoring an old machine like this and even more important is it worth like spending hours with this thing and like trying to write a document with WordStar and printing it out and all of that stuff. Or should it just be put, uh, put in storage, in uh, dry storage? And uh, the time that would usually be spent on, on playing with old CPM software, spending that time on fixing new equipment. Love to hear from you. And make sure to subscribe. There's a lot more of this junk coming your way. Later.